Let's talk about centripetal acceleration. Now in the previous video, we gave some hint about what centripetal acceleration is. It comes into picture because the direction of velocity constantly changes. Now in this video, we will try to derive a relationship for centripetal acceleration and we will also try to visualize it. But before, we do, uh, but before we do that, let's try and reiterate the idea that we discussed in the last video. We said that velocity keeps changing in circular motion. We saw that with a demonstration that when the object goes around in the circle, the velocity is always tangential to the motion of the object. And in that situation, clearly, the magnitudes of all the velocities are equal to each other, which is equal to the value of speed, which we can say is a small v. And the direction of the velocities are constantly changing, as you can see. Now, this change in, this change in velocity gives rise to an acceleration. Now, after calculations, what we find out is that this acceleration is always directed towards the center. That's why the name given to this acceleration is centripetal acceleration. Centripetal also means center seeking. Now, in the subsequent section of this video, we'll try to derive a relationship between the centripetal acceleration and the other known variables to us. So, please try and pay attention because it may be a little tricky to understand. So, first of all, we'll begin by looking at the most fundamental definition of instantaneous acceleration, which is given by limit delta t tends to 0, delta v by delta t. We already talked about this formula in the video of acceleration. Now, in this specific situation of calculating centripetal acceleration, we have taken a small section of our circular motion and have put our focus on that. Now, this section is the starting point when the object begins its motion by velo uh, with velocity v1 vector. And then the second instant, we take a snapshot when its velocity is v2 vector. So basically from the previous diagram, it is this section of the circular motion that I'm talking about. So once we have taken that into consideration, I can write delta v vector simply as v final minus v initial. So in this situation, clearly v final is v2 vector and v initial is v1 vector. So I have written delta v as v2 minus v1 and delta t is as it is. Now, we will begin solving this problem by essentially figuring out the value of v2 minus v1 vector first from the very starting point. So, I will draw v1 and v2 separately so that I can subtract them. So, here they are, this is the v1 vector vertically up and v2 vector is in this direction that I have drawn. As you know, vectors can be moved around in the plane. So, if I carry out the subtraction of v1 from v2, I will obtain this vector as my resultant which is my delta v vector. If you have any doubts in how to subtract two vectors, please go back and watch the video of subtraction of vectors in the first chapter of vectors and calculus. So delta v vector is in this direction. Now I can also calculate the value of the angle uh, between v1 and v2. Let's see how we do that. So over here in this diagram, our object moved from this position to this position and it uh, traversed an angle of delta theta at the center. Now if I draw a line parallel to v1 vector, which will clearly be perpendicular to r1 vector, through this point, I will be able to calculate the angle. Let's see, so the construction I make is a line perpendicular to r1 vector through this point where from where the v2 vector starts. Now, you can see that in this triangle, which is clearly a right angle triangle, this angle is 90 degrees, this angle is delta theta. So, this angle will clearly be 90 degrees minus theta. And if this angle is 90 degree minus theta, this angle is 90 degrees. Why? Because we know that tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. So though this angle has to be 90 degrees. So if I add these two angles, it will become 180 degrees minus theta. So what is the value of this unknown angle? It will simply be 180 degrees minus 180 minus theta, which upon calculation will come out to be directly delta theta. So what I see is the angle that V2 vector makes with a line which is exactly parallel to V1 vector is delta theta. Therefore, the angle it should make with V1 vector is also equal to delta theta. We have simply applied the concepts of geometry in a circle. Now there is another interesting pair of vectors which may help me solve this problem are the vectors R1 and R2. The reason I'm saying this is because they have a very neat resemblance with my original vectors. Because v1 and v2 vectors have the same magnitude and the direction of v2 is delta theta away from the direction of v1. Similarly, r1 and r2 vectors have the same magnitude because they are the radius of the same circle and the direction of r2 is delta theta away from r1. Second point of interest is that v1 and v2 vectors are respectively perpendicular to r1 and r2 vectors because tangents are always perpendicular to radius. Now, based on this information, I will draw this uh, combination separately as you can see here. 
and just to create a triangle which looks similar to that triangle, I'll carry out the same difference operation between R2 and R1 also, just for that purpose. So if I subtract R1 from R2, it will clearly give me a vector starting here at the head of R1 and ending at the head of R2, which will be my delta R vector. Now you can see in these two triangles, V1 and V2 are equal to each other, R1 and R2 are equal to each other, and the angle contained between these two sides is also equal to each other. So I can clearly say that V1 upon R1 is equal to V2 upon R2, and the angle theta contained between them is also equal which means these two triangles are similar to each other by the SAS condition. You can also prove these two triangles equal by AAA condition because these two, triangle, uh, these two angles when they are, once they are equal, I also know that these two triangles are isosceles in nature because their sides are equal, R1 and R2 are equal to each other and V1 and V2 have equal magnitudes. So I can say that these two angles will be equal to each other and these two angles will also be equal to each other. And because the third angle is already equal to each other, all the three angles have to be equal to each other. So by AAA also you can prove their similarity. But once we have proved their similarity, I can easily write this relationship, which is modulus of delta V vector or the magnitude of delta V vector upon magnitude of V1 vector is equal to magnitude of delta R vector upon magnitude of R1 vector. So essentially I have taken these two triangles and I have taken magnitudes because I am only interested in the lengths and not in the direction. So what I have done is I have taken the ratio of this side upon this side and this side upon this side and equated them because the triangles are similar. I hope these basic geometry operations are clear to you. So if I proceed with the calculations, I will just to simplify my expression, I will write magnitude of delta V vector as delta V mod of V1 vector is simply V, which is the speed value, delta R vector magnitude is simply delta R and R1 vector's magnitude is simply the radius R. Now once I have established that, I can write it as delta V is equal to V into delta R upon R. Remember, I am doing all this because I have to ultimately carry out this operation to find acceleration. So I am essentially isolating delta V and then I will divide by delta T to essentially obtain this expression. So over here, I will divide by delta T on both sides and I'll obtain delta V by delta T is equal to V upon R into delta R by delta T. And in the next step, I have to simply apply the limit essentially to get my acceleration. So limit delta T tends to zero, I'll apply on both sides and ultimately on RHS, I'll obtain limit delta T tends to zero V delta R upon R delta T. Now this is a very important expression and this will ultimately lead me to the final formula of centripetal acceleration. Let's see how we get there. So over here, Let's uh, keep an eye on this expression because we'll have to use it to essentially draw our diagrams. So here we are interested in delta R upon delta T where delta T tends to zero. V and R are anyway constant values. V is the constant speed and R is the fixed radius of the circle. Now in this diagram, this angle is delta theta for me. If I keep decreasing the angle delta theta because when delta T uh, tends to zero, the object will not get enough time to move a big angle and angle will also decrease as the time interval uh, decreases. So if I keep decreasing my angle delta theta for every smaller interval of time, clearly here delta T1 is more than delta T2 and is more than delta T3. So for each smaller interval of time, the object will be able to traverse much smaller angle. So in the limiting condition, we will essentially have delta theta so small that over here this delta R will almost be on the circumference of the circle which means it will become a line on the circle itself when delta theta is extremely small or tending to zero. So in that situation, I can clearly say that delta R by delta T will become V. Now, how am I saying that? Because tangential speed or tangential velocity is simply the arc length upon time. And in this limiting situation, delta R has become almost the arc itself, the arc of the circle itself. So delta R by delta T essentially has become the velocity or the, in this case, the speed itself. So essentially in the limiting condition when delta T tends to zero, delta R by delta T has become speed V, the constant speed V. So in that, uh, in that case, my centripetal acceleration's magnitude will come out to be V square by R. Now this is a very important relationship and you must always remember it, that centripetal acceleration is given by V square by R. Now let's try to visualize and look at some salient points associated with centripetal acceleration. 
the first thing we see is that centripetal acceleration is represented by the symbol ac where c we put in the subscript showing centripetal this is given by v square by r and we know from the previous video that v is equal to omega r so i can also write it as omega square r so both these formulae are important for you to remember the next interesting thing is that the direction of centripetal acceleration is always towards the center so let's try and visualize how the centripetal acceleration looks so here we have the velocities and as you can see the centripetal acceleration is shown in red here is always targeting towards the center so you can see centripetal acceleration is also perpendicular to the tangential velocity always and every time because it is parallel to the radius and perpendicular to the tangent so centripetal acceleration first important thing is always perpendicular to the direction of velocity and the second it is always focused towards center once again you can see the value of all the speed or the magnitudes of velocity is equal because it's a uniform circular motion therefore summarizing what we just learned i can say that centripetal acceleration is responsible for keeping an object in the circular path that's what we saw because centripetal acceleration is the reason why the velocity is able to change constantly and this is the reason why an object stays in a circular path centripetal acceleration cannot change the magnitude of velocity which means it cannot affect the speed of the particle going around in the circle the reason is that it is always perpendicular to the velocity and there is no component of this centripetal acceleration in the direction of velocity so centripetal acceleration can never change the magnitude of velocity or in our case the speed centripetal acceleration constantly changes the direction of velocity that's what we saw that is the reason why the, the centripetal acceleration is in play in the first place all the centripetal acceleration always points towards the center its direction in itself keeps changing so if you uh, look at our original diagram once again the ac is always pointing towards the center but the direction of ac itself is also constantly changing so these uh, things you must keep in your mind and i hope you understood the topic very well thank you